And on that particular year, 1968, a young man, of course he wasn't really young then, <laughs> but that no one ever heard of. It's the people that no one ever heard of that are the backbone of NRB. Donnie Nelson. Donnie Nelson, I knew him because when I was a teenager, maybe 16, 15, in Minneapolis, Donnie Nelson got saved and gave his heart to the Lord. He had been, boy, he was a tough cookie. Uh, he had been in the, uh, in the war, a belly gunner in, in a big bomber plane and all of that, so a prisoner of war. In a B-17 in Germany. In B-17 in Germany, so on and so forth. He drank. Man, was he ever, he could, he could, he, he was really a mess. Well, really, uh, he had no education, except he could sure swear, and he could, and he could sure drink, and then he became a Christian through, through the witness of one of his friends who had gotten saved from a television program following the Minneapolis Lakers 15 minutes uh, in Minneapolis. That's how Donnie got saved. And when Donnie got saved and gave his heart to Christ, I don't know why God put on his heart to be a missionary in Alaska, not Hawaii or the Bahama Islands <laughs> or California, but Alaska. And Donnie Nelson, was the most ill-prepared, was the most unlikely Christian leader, but he had fervor, and he had a commitment, and he went up to Alaska, taught himself how to fly so he could get out into the villages, and then in the winter time when it was really bad, he said, why don't we have a radio station up here? And Donnie Nelson went down to the Twin Cities and raised some money, and he built a 50,000-watt AM radio station in North Pole, Alaska. And the call letters are KJNP, King Jesus of the North Pole. And many of your radio ministries are on that right today. King Jesus of the North Pole. Well, then Donnie said, why don't we have a television station? <laughs> And so they have a television station and then add some FM stations. And Donnie was here in 1968. He was a board, he was a member of the board of directors then. Bob Cook was the president or the chairman, whatever they called the leader then. And Bob Cook had Donnie take his guitar in the opening of the board meeting. They always have a little devotional. And Donnie came. And he thought he was with all these important people, so on and so forth. I remember he got choked up a little bit, got a little stage fright, a little bit. But he sang, don't lose your vision for Jesus. That set the tone. And that was in his heart. Just a simple, simple little chorus like that. So when we were planning the breakfast, we thought, my word, whoever heard of Donnie Nelson or KJNP, King Jesus of the North Pole, one of the men that went up to North Pole, Alaska to help Donnie get started was Dick Olson. He's still up there. And the building that they operate from, the television station, the 50,000-watt radio station, the FM stations and everything, is the building Donnie Nelson built out of logs with kind of a grass roof uh, roof on it. But here is, here is Dick Olson's greetings to you folks that was just sent us a few days ago. We got it ready to go? Okay, here.
Greetings from KJNP, King Jesus, North Pole, Alaska, broadcasting God's Word to the interior of Alaska for some 53 years. Founded by Don Nelson, a man with a drive and a vision. Also, who was a past board member of NRB. We say God bless you, NRB members, for what you do to keep God's Word uh, going out throughout the airwaves. So from the frozen chosen of the North to our extended family, we give you greetings and have a blessed convention and keep keeping on for Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you. Wait a minute now. Oh, just a second. There's more? And then Donnie Nelson died going home from NRB and he wasn't feeling really good and, and his connecting flight as he was trying to get up finally to the North Pole but through Minneapolis but his connecting flight I think was in Atlanta and it was it was kind of his plane arriving in Atlanta to make his connecting flight he had to run and that boy that was tough on him when he finally got on the plane he wasn't feeling good when he got to Minneapolis and they took him to the hospital and that's where he died going home from NRB and his wife Jen is dead his little daughter, Judy, I remember her when she's six years old, is gone. Well, who's left? Well, Dick Olson is left. But then I learned the last time I was in Minneapolis that Donnie Nelson's niece works for Jan Markell up in Minneapolis. And Angie, where are you, honey? Come on up here. Come here for a minute. Oh, well, Rich, you give Angie your, your microphone for just a second. And her daddy was 21 years younger than Donnie Nelson. So her daddy was Donnie Nelson's little tiny brother. Angie, what do you remember about your uncle? <laughs> uh, Hold it up there. Get it up to your mouth. All right, I'll get it up to my mouth. All right. <laughs> um, my Uncle Don was an uh, amazing man. Um, when he spoke, everybody listened. And as a child growing up, uh, my dad was 20 years younger than Don, so I'm my cousin yeah. Judy, who passed away, Don's daughter, yeah. was my father's age. So um, I would listen to Don speak, and he just moved me, yeah. he moved everybody. Was he opinionated? Very opinionated. <laughs> it runs in the Nelson family. <laughs> But he had been through a lot, and he he had a message, and he wanted to get that message out. Yeah. And it was all about salvation. And nothing was going to stop him. Nothing stopped him. And it was all about what? Salvation. Salvation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And don't lose your vision for Jesus was really in his heart, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. He would get very teary when he spoke <laughs> of the redemption of Jesus Christ in his life. He was... Yeah. Um, like Mr. Bott just said, he could swear, <laughs> and he drank, and he was a mess, and long before me, but his testimony was solid in his heart, and he absolutely loved the Lord. And yeah. He challenged churches to stand up for the truth, to speak the truth, and to never lose the message of salvation. Yeah. I remember, well, of course, well, would they understand that, I... I remember he went to St. Paul Bible Institute in preparation you know, to learn something about the Bible. And that's what they gave him a certificate for having attended yep. because he could never pass any of the tests. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you. Thank, Thank you for you being so here. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Angie.